Let's go to our passage that we can try and get so many places. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, that my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded from my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is uncertain. He gives power to the faint. He strengthens the powers. Even the youths will faint and be weary. And the young will fall exhausted. But those who will wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk Say? Amen. 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 So, um, I wanted to, I only got a very short period of time, but I wanted to share with you some of the things that's going on with me. Um, every year, I kind of spend time praying and asking God to um, give me a passage of scripture that only takes me for the year. And this is the one that um, I received. Last year, I received Jeremiah, this is Isaiah. And um, particularly, uh, verse 31. And within verse 31, where it says, They shall mount up with wings like eagles, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. Um, and I just want to ask you to tell your neighbor, neighbor. Or say it like it's new year. Say neighbor. <laughs> neighbor. neighbor. Say oh neighbor. Oh, oh neighbor. neighbor. Wait for it. Wait, wait for it. it. Tell your neighbor, just wait for it. Just, just wait, wait for, for it. it. It's interesting that this passage is written at a time in Israel's life and history where they have had the worst of the worst happen to them. Um, what you'll find is the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd First and Second Chronicles are written after the exile. So they're written, and also the first books of the Bible, Genesis, with the Exodus, with the Numbers, are also edited again end of the exile. And everything about Israel's history feeds back to, if you will follow God's commandments, disaster will happen to you. Mm -hmm. 
So all it, it feeds into, and what they're recognising is that disaster has already happened. Mm. They've messed up. They've utterly failed in every sense of the word. Babylon has come in, and after Babylon, Assyrians, and after the Assyrians, the Persians, and God's people are despoiled. Their names have been changed from, from um, Daniel to Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. They are... Um, their, 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 their language has been changed. They've taken all of the people of talent, all of the people of pedigree, all of the people with skills, and they've transported them hundreds or thousands of miles from the place of their birth into a foreign country. They have demanded that they sing the Lord's song in a strange land. The worst has already happened. And so we have this in verse 27. Why do you speak, O Jacob? Why do you say, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? And the Lord has disregarded my path. And you may be looking back at 2020, at arms 2019, and you might be thinking some of the worst stuff I ever experienced happened to me. I had some negative outcomes. I had some things I did not anticipate happening, and curveballs, and what in the world is God doing? Has anyone had moments like that in 2019? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, God? But here's what the prophet tells us. The prophet tells us, number one, that the God in whom we trust is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. I love this bit. God does not grow faint or weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And what that means is that God is never frustrated with the project. Yeah. God is never at a point where we, uh, God is disenchanted with what's going on. With God, you know, have you ever, you know, I mean, um, when we first moved into our house, I bought some stuff from IKEA. <laughs> It wasn't like you actually, it was Wayfair, Wayfair. What the stuff of Wayfair? And they've got these little books they've got with, with these with these amorphous beings putting things together. And I was putting together a coffee table, a nice white coffee table. I was putting it together. And um, people know when I'm putting things together to leave the immediate vicinity. <laughs> <laughs> this coffee table together and it won't work. It just won't work. I got to a stage where I, I, I was almost crying <laughs> with rage. And I moved beyond tears and rage to utter despair. This is not going to work. And there is no way. And I moved from rage, despair, to absolute surrender. I broke the thing in pieces. <laughs> I put it in the west. I asked the people to come and take it away. We don't have a coffee table in our house. <laughs> because I get frustrated with projects when they don't work. I give up sometimes when it's too hard. But what the prophet is saying is that God never faints. God is never going to give up on you. God is never going to throw you away as, 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 as too hard to help, too difficult to engage. Thank you, Lord. God is always good. God is never going to look at you and say, when are you going to get it? When are you going to get it? When are you going to get it? God is never going to stop you upside the head and press the reset button. Mm. <laughs> what God is going to do is going to keep investing. He's going to keep watching and keep waiting. Because God's understanding is unsearchable. And what he's saying is that God's compassion, God's empathy, God's understanding of who you are and your situation and your frustrations and your difficulties, your idiosyncrasies, uh, uh, God's understanding has no end. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. It's unsearchable. God does not give up. The second thing he tells us, it says, God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Yeah. If you, in 2019, were at the point of giving up, where you thought, oh my God, in the words of young people, Bundis, <laughs> had enough. Um, uh, you know, God says that God gives power at that point. At the moment you are ready to faint, God gives power to the faint. And if you are powerless and you feel like you've got nothing left, God strengthens the powerless. That's the God that we're working with. And some of you think, well, I'm too old. What do I have to offer? What do I have to give? Here's what God says to you. God says, even the youths will 
will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait, tell somebody wait for it. Wait. For those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. I want to talk to you about this waiting thing because in Hebrew, Hebrew is a very pictorial language. Hebrew, when it talks about waiting, when we think about waiting, waiting is a passive activity, isn't it? Mm. Like you're waiting for a bus. Yeah. You know? And those of, most of us don't wait for a bus anymore because we've got bus times on our phones. And within five minutes, we run to the bus stop and we're there and it's there. But have you ever been waiting for something in a line or in a queue? Mm. Waiting for something to happen. And you've got types of waiting, haven't you? You've got two people waiting like this. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And then they start queue watching. For anyone who's jumping in the queue. Oi! There's an idea. Get back. Waiting, waiting. Passive waiting for something to happen. That's not what the Hebrew means when it says waiting. When it talks about waiting, it means um, the idea is that there is a rope. At one end of the rope, there is God. And at the other end of the rope, there is you. And then the word he in wait in Hebrew actually means to twist the rope. Wow. To turn the rope. So the whole period of waiting is between. Have you, ever, have you ever wound up a wire? From the extreme length of the wire to the time it takes to get, for the wire to get wound up is the waiting period. Waiting isn't about keeping still. Waiting is about being passive, it is about being active. Remember the video we watched with Sasha, the eagle? The purpose of that video was to show you, did you see what the eagle did? Was still on the arm, but as soon as the wind started to, that turbine started to blow, immediately the bird was alert and active and ready. I love it, it said, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings like an eagle. Everyone say like an eagle. Like like an eagle. Tell somebody, wait for it. Wait for it. Like an eagle. Like an eagle. Tell somebody else, wait for it. Wait for it. Like an eagle. Like an eagle. This has to do with you being ready and alert. As soon as the wind started, Sasha was up. Did you, did you see the shape of her head change? Or his head change? All of a sudden, those feathers on the head went back. And the wings started to ex expand. Because there is something about eagles. Eagles have a real clear sense of vision. They have a clear sense of what it is they want to go for, where it is they want to go. And I want, them challenge you, cha I want to challenge you in 2020 to have a clear sense of what it is you want to achieve. Sometimes vision is overused and it's become a technical term for those in business and for those who want to make more money. But what vision is, is, is a clear sense of where you want to be. When I have a vision of getting, let's say, from here to where I live in Wellington, I don't look at the individual routes. I think about the beginning and the end. Mm. I think about where it is I want to end up. And that's what I want you to think about. What is the end you want in mind? And then the next thing eagles do is they sense the wind. Did you see? As soon as the wind started blowing, before it got to the bird, the bird was ready, sensing the wind. And the other thing eagles do is they work with the wind. And that's what I want to do. This is the challenge for us in 2020, to work with the Spirit. Work with the wind, work with the Spirit. Eagles are the only birds that fly into the storm. Other birds avoid the storm. When they sense the storm coming, other birds find shelter, find safety. But when an eagle senses the storm, they fly into the center of the storm because that's where, that's where they know the wind is strongest. And we know in the Bible when we talk about the wind, it's always the Ruach or the Numa, the Spirit of God. Okay, then the other thing as well about the, the, um, the eagle, as you looked at Sasha in that film, they have lunar feathers at the end, which are directional feathers, which guide the flight. There's only about five or six feathers and there is a big feather at the end, and they call it, the, and it sends, gives a sense of direction. That's what we're talking about, your inbuilt sense of direction. As you get together, where do you want to end up? Where do you want to go? How do you know when you're going the wrong way? And are you able to get yourself back on track with the wind, with the Spirit, working with the Holy Spirit? And then finally, did you see when you took the, um, the, the, the restraints off that bird? The bird was soaring. And that's what you've got to be ready. Whenever you sense the opportunity, whenever you are prepared, um, Phil talks about being prepared, and that's one of the challenges. 
that you've got to have. You've got to be prepared. Get things ready because when the spirit moves, you've got to be ready to move with the spirit. And the question I want to ask you, are you prepared financially? What are you putting in place financially? Are you prepared relationally? Where is the state of your relationship? Are you ready to take the next step, whatever that next step is? What do you need to take in place to take that next step? What would you need to do in order to be comfortable in that next step? In terms of your career, your profession, and your professional life, what's the next step? So if the wind blows, you're ready to go. Okay, in terms, of, in terms of your health and your physical well-being, what's the next step for you? Is it going to be like the other years where you made resolutions and you joined a, a, a gym in January and, in, and when they saw you coming, the managers of the gym smiled because they knew it was free money. <laughs> they got you signed up for a year's contract. And they, and, and I guarantee if everybody who had a membership came to the gym, no one would be able to use the equipment. Yeah. We'd all be standing around like this. But they, they sell membership because they know we have a habit of making commitments and then walking away from those commitments when the mood that created those commitments has lifted. Mm. What this is about, this is about being ready to move with the wind. And then the whole thing about gliding. You know, I believe this is going to be a year when it's not going to be as hard for you as you think it's going to be. Because of your use of working with the wind. Do you notice the eagles? The, the eagle, the, I didn't see that eagle flap the wings once. No. Have you seen chickens? Chickens flap a lot, fly low. <laughs> And a lot of us are like that, aren't we? Flat a lot, <laughs> fly little. But here is the challenge for us to extend our receptivity, extend our mindfulness, extend our preparedness, so that when the wind blows, we are ready to go. And that's my challenge. Wait for it in the sense of prepared awareness. Work with the wind. Get your internal sense of direction ready and then take off and soar. God bless you for 2020.